Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, the black hole that is BlackRock is going to start to invest into Bitcoin futures. And we're going to take a look at why this could be good and potentially a disaster. Also, Treasury nominee Yellen is looking to curtail use of cryptocurrency. We'll take a look at what has gone in the past as far as illicit activity in cryptocurrencies and how two other people will probably just offset what the heck she's talking about. And lastly, one of my favorite authors and podcasters finally talks about uh, Bitcoin in depth. That is Tim Ferriss, author of 4-Hour Workweek, 4-Hour Body, and Tools of Titans. And we're going to take a look at how he became successful with Bitcoin as far as being lazy, how to understand the other side of the other arguments, and what people are always talking about, about how much they've made in cryptocurrency, even though they've never sold. So we'll take a look at all that. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today is January 21st, 11 a.m. El Paso, Texas time, and watch out. Quite a bit of a dip, wouldn't you say? So Bitcoin is down 8%. That's eh, okay. Uh, it was up around 41,000. Now it's 31,000. This is just one of those things. Uh, everything's down. I mean, for the most part. Ethereum is down 8% to 1,200. Eh, not too bad. Tether's tether, unless you're an auditor, no one really cares. Polkadot sitting firmly in that number four spot at uh, $16. XRP, watch out. Peg of the quarter almost at 27 cents. Cardano down. Litecoin down. Let's see who's down big time. Stellar is down. I understand why. I don't think anything's really changed. Actually, if you look at all these things that are going on right now as far as down, has anything changed? Did anything get hacked? Was there any type of uh, information that, that, that came out that would really curtail the use of cryptocurrency as assets? Not a darn thing. But here we are. So I like to say that these are great days. These are great days if you're a dollar cost averager. If you went all in at 40000 I'm sorry, but that happens. That happened to me as well. And this is one of the things I'm always talking about on this channel. Don't go all in. Don't go all in uh, immediately. If you would have gone in at 40,000, it kind of hurts right now. And who knows how long this dip could last. We could be here for a day, a week, or a couple months. You never know with cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So uh, today I woke up, I'm like, wow, look at this sale. And I'm happy on these days. And I went to Voyager and I picked up some more Ethereum. Uh, I picked up some more Cardano. I picked up some more, what else did I buy? A little bit of chain link. So uh, yeah, it was a pretty good day uh, for me. Now, <clears throat> some people will say, well, it'll bounce right back and, you, and, you, and you'll be okay if you went all in. That's true. I mean, you will, but you got to wait. And now how long you want to wait. So that is what's going on in the market. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our first piece. First up, this is good or bad, depending on uh, which way you look at it. World's largest asset manager, BlackRock, to invest in Bitcoin futures. First of all, who the heck's BlackRock? Well, if you don't know who BlackRock is, uh, they are enormous. They have almost $8 trillion of assets under management. That's trillion with a T. And usually when I'm talking about different companies, I'm like, that's billion with a B. But this one, that's trillion. Let me say that again. That's trillion. That's a lot of money. Good for those guys. So this looks like fantastic news because you've got Bitcoin and one of the, the world's largest entities getting into Bitcoin. So it sounds great, but hold on. So BlackRock filed two statements of additional information with the SEC on Wednesday. Uh, BlackRock did state global allocation fund. Both filings did say this. Certain funds may engage in futures contracts based on Bitcoin futures contracts based on Bitcoin. The two filings further detail this. The only Bitcoin futures in which the funds may invest are cash settled Bitcoin. Let me say that again. Which the funds may invest are cash settled Bitcoin futures traded on commodity exchanges register with the CFTC. So if you read this uh, first article, you're like, wow, futures, this is fantastic. But wait, it's cash. There is no transfer of Bitcoin. There is nothing that is on the blockchain. It is all in cash. So what does that do for us? Well, not much. Really, it doesn't do anything for us at all. And I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's a bad thing. I'm going to tell you why. So let me just take you back to 2017. Let's just take a little, little trippy uh, back to where this all began. So uh, the CME group, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, uh, on December 18th stated, hey, we're going to launch this thing called Bitcoin Futures, and it's gonna be awesome. And I was there. And when this story broke, everybody was like, hallelujah, we've made it to the promised land. This is fantastic because now that institutions are here, it will only go up to the moon. 20,000, that's just a stepping stone to 30, to 100,000, to a million, and it'll never go down. 
So this was on the 15th of December. Actually, this, this uh, story was on December 1st. So a lot of great things happening. But let me just show you what happened. So December 15th, this is what it was. Remember, this is supposed to launch on the 18th. And then we went to the 16th. Oh, that's a pretty good number. 19.4. Not too bad. I mean, it went down a little bit, but okay. And then we had 19.1, December 17th, in anticipation of this futures launch. And then on the 18th, 18,000. And then just a couple days later, 14,000, 21st December. So you can look at this right now and you can say, well, you know, it's a regular four year cycle, but uh, it just is one of those coincidences. And I'm not going to say too much about that, but we haven't had good luck with Bitcoin futures markets. That's all I'm going to say. And on top of that, just so you know, the Ethereum, Ethereum futures market is coming February 8th, 2021. So we will see how that all works out. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But to me, when BlackRock comes in with all that money and they've got a plethora of experience with how they deal with the markets, however you want to say that, it could be a very bumpy ride. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. This one, Janet Yellen. Janet Yellen is the treasury nominee and she's looking to curtail the use of crypto. And she is been in a long line of people who say that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are used for illicit activities. Now, you know my argument here. If you want to do any kind of illicit activities and you need money, you just use dollars. That's what everybody uses. That's what the cartel uses. That's what uh, all the different terrorist organizations work and what have you. They're going to use the U.S. dollars. So sure, I am sure that at some point somebody used Bitcoin for illicit activities. That is very true. But uh, for this person, Janice, just to come up here and go, you know what? Really got to control this because this is just going to get out of, out of control. You know what gets out of control? Your money printing and all the money that you're using. And on top of that, everybody's using that for illicit activities. Maybe we should curtail that a little bit, but that's just me. So when, when I hear these stories and I keep getting uh, comments and questions like, well, you know, because of what she said, maybe that's the reason why uh, the market went down. True, maybe. I will just say this. This market is moved by news and sentiment. Let me say that again. This market is moved by news. And this is just a prime example of nonsense because there is no reason why the market should move in any way, shape or form this much based on fundamentals. It's all on news. It's all on stupid stuff like, like this. So if Janice Yellen is to come out here and go, hey, maybe we should curtail the use of cryptocurrency, everybody gets spooked, which is good for me because I just buy up more, more stuff. But uh, we got to stop this. This is ridiculous. So if it was just Janice Yellen and then she had other people in her organization or throughout the higher echelon of government to say, hey, we really need to look into this, uh, maybe I'd be a little concerned. But I want you to notice something. This guy right here, do you know who this guy is? This guy... He was given a great talk at MIT about blockchain and money. And then there was another one, which is another hour long. And he talks about uh, cryptocurrencies. He talks about Ripple, XRP. He talks about Bitcoin, a little bit about Ethereum. It's a great uh, talk. Pretty smart guy. You know who this guy is? This is Gary Gensler. And Gary Gensler is going to be the new head of the SEC. He knows exactly what it is as far as crypto and digital assets. So I will believe that he is not going to be so heavy handed because it, as it says right here, he's going to start to unwind the work of his present predecessor, Jay Clayton. I do not believe that Yellen really has a firm grasp of what's going on with crypto and digital assets, but I could be wrong. Maybe she's a genius on, on crypto. I have no idea. Gensler here, when you listen to this uh, talk, you will get a firm understanding of just how in-depth this guy is knowledgeable about crypto. On top of that, you're going to take a look at this little article that came up, former Ripple board member, and he wasn't a board member. Actually, he was an advisor. He was tapped to lead uh, Biden's OCC. Now, he's just being tapped. He's being heavily considered. But if that's the case, I mean, we had Brian Brooks. He did a great job. He was on he was the legal counsel for Coinbase. Now we're going to have uh, this gentleman, Michael Barr, and he was uh, one of the advisors for Ripple. So it's safe to assume that he knows a lot about crypto and digital assets, too. So if you have somebody in the OCC and somebody in the SEC and you got Janice Yellen over here going, eh, you know what, maybe maybe we should do something with this because of illicit. I'm going to defer to these guys and they'll probably set her straight. On top of that, I will say this. 
Barr was part of the Treasury Department in President Barack Obama's administration. So if he was part of Barack Obama's administration, there's a pretty good chance Biden might be leaning towards this guy, where he worked on bank regulations in the form of the Dodd-Frank Act. And also, uh, Yellen was also a part of the Treasury. So uh, they probably know each other pretty well, and uh, maybe uh, they can actually talk about, hey, <laughs> this is what's really going on with crypto and gelasses. Uh, Barr joined Royal uh, Ripple's Board of Advisors in 2015, though company spokesman confirmed he was no longer a member early this week. So maybe he was a member all the way up to like, uh, you know, a month ago or so. Who knows? But this is good news. So if we're going to talk about Yellen and, you know, how awful this is, to me, it's not awful. I mean, it's good for me. I get to, like I said, I get to pick up things. But in the grand scheme of things, it's just somebody who's like, you know, maybe we should do this. Anyhow, don't just think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. Next up, this was a great... Uh, find. I really enjoyed listening to this podcast. That's Tim Ferriss. And that's one of his uh, business partners, Kevin Rose. And Tim, if you don't know, he made he did these great books. I've read them all. Uh, for Our Work Week, For Our Body. The Chef, I didn't actually read. But this one, Tools of Titans, I was reading this actually last night. It's a fantastic book. And Tim has been around for quite some time. Uh, pretty respected uh, throughout. Talked to a lot of high-profile pro people. I mean, in that uh, Tool of Titans book, he's got everybody in there from Arnold Schwarzenegger to Laird Hamilton to a lot of uh, great athletes and endurance and just everybody that you ever want to uh, hear about as far as what's going on. So in this podcast, it was pretty long, about an hour or so. He talks in the first half hour about Bitcoin. And what I didn't know was that Tim had actually invested into Bitcoin uh, back in early 2017. And he said, and it was pretty funny because he said, I'm lazy and... <laughs> The reason why I've done so well with Bitcoin is because I just kind of forgot about it and I didn't realize what happened because when it went all the way to 20,000, I just kind of forgot about it and I was going to sell it, but then something else came up and whatever. And uh, now, you know, he said it, it dropped so low. He goes, I can't sell it, man. And then he goes, now it's just going to the moon. So I got to keep it anyhow. He goes, but and it's a really good case in point of just setting and forgetting it, you know, and then if you can dollar across average, like with me, what I do is I just set the recurring buy button on Voyager and I put in like 25 bucks a day into the, the VGX token. That's what I do. And I just let it go. So it's pretty hard to just keep buying every single day. And you're like, ugh, buying, 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 buying. But if you have it kind of work in the background, you're like, meh, and just kind of like just happens. And then before you know it, you're like, holy smokes, I got a lot of cryptocurrency. That's kind of how uh, Tim's philosophy kind of worked out pretty well. Kind of works out okay uh, on this end too. So just be lazy sometime. And the second thing he was talking about in this uh, article or this uh, podcast, he says, if you really want to give a good debate, you got to understand the other side. So like on this channel, we always talk about how great Bitcoin is and how great crypto, but I'm going to start to really play devil's advocate and go on the other side and start to be like uh, Robini and talk, and talk to you about, you know, how it could fail and how it could not, might not work. Because I think it's best if we understand both sides of the argument, that way when things come up and you're talking to your family, your loved ones, whatever else, and they bring up these these, uh, these points, which uh, being valid or not, it's good to have an answer to that. And then the last thing, and this is kind of comes back to, uh, to what I did yesterday. He talks about how he's met a lot of people in crypto digital assets. And all these people are, he said, they're all geniuses because they've all bought at like, you know, way early. And they said, yeah, I made like a couple million or I made 500,000. He goes, and the next question I always ask them is this, well, when did you sell? Well, I didn't sell any of it. So what happened? Ah, well, you know, I wrote it all the way up and I wrote it all, all the way down. Does that sound like you? I will tell you right now, that sounds like me. And one of these things that I've been thinking about a lot lately is exit strategies and when to get out. So we did a live stream yesterday. Didn't go so hot because it was pretty glitchy uh, in the first couple of minutes. And then there was a bunch of lag time. But for some reason, the uh, recording came up perfect. I don't understand why. But I was talking about um, my exit strategy for Ethereum. And this was the strategy I was talking about yesterday. And it's, I mean, you can find that in the description of all my videos. It just says ETH exit strategy. I've got the Bitcoin exit strategy, all those strategies. Well, those two. And then I got XRP exit strategy, which the XRP exit strategy is pretty awful. It uh, doesn't, uh, <laughs> doesn't play into because that was before the SEC. So if you want a good laugh, take a look at that. But this one, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, but it's not very simple. And when I was looking at this and I keep looking at this and looking at this and looking at this and it's not a bad idea 
but I think we can simplify it. I think we can make it better for everybody. So I'm gonna end, I'm gonna make a separate video today. Uh, hopefully, if it's good time, I should get time. And I call it the 80-20 rule. Uh, actually, uh, the 80-20 P rule. And it just goes like this. It's I want what I'm going to do, not what you are, should do, because I can't give financial advice. This is what I'm gonna start doing for everything. I don't believe that this next bull run, 2021, is the end-all be-all. I think we're still very early, and we got another four years for four-year cycles to really hit our stride. So for this one, I'm not going to hold on to all my crypto. I think that would be foolhardy. Now, you can. You can hold it all on for the rest of your life. That's fine. But uh, after I was listening to, to, to Tim, I was like, you know what? I really got to get on the ball and really uh, be a little more stringent for all of my holdings based on my price predictions and the probability. So I'm going to share this with everybody uh, later today. But again, it's it's super simple. It's just an 80-20 rule. You're going to sell 80%. You're going to hold 20%. Even right now, it, it comes out to a lot better. Look at this one, 528 versus 158. And I think it's just a better option for everybody. All right. So uh, again, that's what I'm going to do, not what you have to do. So I will put these together for everything in my portfolio on top of everything that I have predicted, on top of all the probabilities, and I'll explain exactly what I'm talking about. So that is it. So thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be too much gonna pop up on your left and right. Uh, go ahead and check those out. Let YouTube do their magic. Also, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing because right now, everything that we do and everything that we talk about is news related. And it really comes down to within that 12 to 24 hour time frame. So if you're not subscribed, uh, you may not get uh, the notifications. Also, if you even if you are subscribed, you still I still get shadow banned. That's just <laughs> just how it is. I got many of people who say, hey, I didn't uh, you know get the notification. So if it would be so kind, click on that bell. And uh, that is it, because as these things roll out, this is going to be the year to really uh, bring it home. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.